I came, I went to Los Angeles to be an artist. I wanted to be an artist and um, I went to a, a, a art school to learn to be a painter. And I did that for two years and it was, it was nice. I mean, I really enjoyed it, but it was very intimidating. It was, um, painting seemed like just, it seemed like a priesthood kind of. I mean, you had to have this um, intellectual rigor that I was, I, I was intimidated by and I didn't really know if I had the stamina, the intellectual stamina to really follow it through. Um, now, at my age now, I think I'm not as, it's not as mystical as it was then. Um, now I'm a little bit more cynical about it and I think, you know, well, kind of anybody can do it. I mean, you just have to apply yourself. I can always paint. I'll go to school to learn to do something technically and I'll learn how to make clothes because fashion's fun and I like it. So I learned, I went to a trade school to learn how to make um, patterns so that I would always have a job. And I did. I mean, I had jobs, a lot of jobs for a long time in the garment industry in Los Angeles where I would have to do patterns all day long um, for inexpensive companies that would bring me a like a Versace jacket and then I would have to copy it in, you know, an hour and then they would take it back to, you know, for their refund. So, you know, I learned how to do things, you know, over the years, you just learn how to do patterns over and over again. And it was great training. It was fantastic. And, you know, I had a nice life. I mean, pattern making is for a young guy then, I mean, you know, I made a nice amount of money, so I was able to have a good life. And um, then finally, one of the companies that I was working with um, uh, went bankrupt, and I thought, well, um, I've enjoyed security, and I've enjoyed a conventional lifestyle for a while. Now, you know, now I'm going to do what I was meant to do. And what I was meant to do was I was meant to do some, like, express my personal self um, for better or for worse. Like if, if, if I never make money, I can do that. I can be poor. It's not, that's not hard for me. Um, and I can survive and I'll just, you know, I, I need to be, I need to go all the way. I need to, um, it sounds a little cliche, but it, it's kind of like fulfill my destiny. I have to go as far as I can before I die. Well, I believe that destiny is created, and I believe that you kind of you you, you shape it. Um, I'm I'm a great believer in self invention, um, but I guess my decision maybe instead of saying destiny is maybe like now I'm going to invent my creation of the creation of myself. You know, I'll have a, a nice life maybe like Charles James. And I thought Charles, you know, he, he did it the way he wanted to, and he was kind of he did kind of extreme clothes, and and he and it, I don't think he ever made money, and I, I think he lived kind of like in in a very poor, in, in squalor, <laughs> a little bit. But I thought that was kind of cool, and I it, and I, I liked that idea of kind of um, I liked that devotional aspect, the kind of idea of giving everything up for for an ideal, um, an aesthetic ideal, more than I ever dreamed. I never considered doing runway in, uh, in Paris, and I never do, considered doing runway in New York even. Um, the only reason that I started runway was because American Vogue, I mean, I was selling my clothes to stores and to the best stores that I knew, and I mean, I wasn't stupid. I knew what good stores were, so. And when you're in those stores, people like American Vogue run into you. They see what you're doing and they saw it and they offered to um, pay for my first runway show because they were at that m moment, they were um, interested in promoting American designers. It was a little tricky because I wasn't really sure. I mean, I had never really thought about it. And then I thought, well, you know, I, my aesthetic is so narrow in a way and so specific that I think the first couple of shows will be nice, but after that, it's not going to move very fast. And it's not going to move fast enough to satisfy the fast pace of fashion. And it, if I expose it like that, I run the risk of burning it out really fast. Whereas if I don't expose it, my aesthetic might 
last in a very quiet way for a very long time. But, you know, I thought, oh, hell, I'm 40. I mean, you know, how can you say no? And it's such a great opportunity. So I'll give it a try and we'll see what happens. So that's how it happened. And at the beginning, it was hard because I'd never even seen a runway show before. So I wasn't familiar at all with um, just how it worked and how to present my aesthetic in a credible way. And it took me kind of a long time. And I regret that in a way, just because I feel like there were some awkward moments. Um, there were some awkward shows, shows at the beginning where I was um, learning publicly, where I, was, um, I hadn't had the time to really to learn. Um, so I, I have a feeling that the impression that I first gave when I first started doing Runway was a little bit um, awkward. Runway was kind of the least of my problems because the other hard part was at the same time, um, I was learning how to, um, to be a part of the fashion system and that's with like the schedules and the deliveries and the factories and I was having to deal with Italians and French all at the same time. And um, that was the hard part. The runway shows was like a little piece of that, but the rest of it, of just producing and manufacturing clothes in Europe, that was really hard. Because I wasn't really, um, I'd been independent for so long and living in Los Angeles, it's not like I was in New York where I was part of the system of like interning at um, Calvin Klein and at Ralph Lauren and stuff. I mean, I had no idea how they produced clothes. I just did stuff out of my studio. So to learn how to produce and how to manufacture in that way. And the places that I'd manufactured before, they were like knockoff shops that did things really fast and they had their own, you know, it was a completely different world. So, um, that was the hard part. That was the hardest part. So doing the fashion shows was like, um, that was a reflection, the awkwardness of the fashion shows was a reflection of the awkwardness in just learning how to pick up the pace and to learn to be ready in time and to learn, um, y y you know, the fabric deliveries and when the fabrics get there and when you actually get them in time for ma the sample making and getting it, I mean, you know, just the calendar mm -hmm. that, that, they all, that everybody had to learn. So, and, and I had to learn it in French and Italian, which I didn't speak. So it was, um, that was complicated. And now when I look at it, I'm thinking, God, I can't believe we stayed in business. I mean, that was a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but now the whole fashion show thing, um, I love it. I never expected to. I just kind of thought, oh, fashion shows, I guess you kind of have to do them. But I thought that they were, I mean, I appreciated them. I liked looking at them, but being a part of them, I thought that they were usually too, it, it wasn't what I wanted to promote. The clothes that I wanted to do, I wanted them to be very quiet and very discreet and very, I, I kind of resented fashion shows because I didn't like the idea of fashion shows presenting something that um, they considered a fantasy. I, I didn't like it that you saw stuff on the runway that you knew wouldn't even be in the stores, that it was all there for the effect of impressing you. That irritated me. So when I did shows, one of my promises was, you know, I'm never going to show anything that I'm not going to sell. And as time has gone on, I have felt, I feel like I've been able to create the mood that I want to maintain the integrity of like presenting things that, that that I fully intend people to wear. I'm, I'm not putting something on the runway that is a fantasy for red, I'm not a very red carpet person. I mean, like the stuff that I put on the runway, I see people wearing every day. I mean, I want, I want people to, to wear them every day. And, um, and it seems to have worked. <laughs> I, I, so, um, yeah, so now I really like the, the runway show thing. I, and I like, and I'm very proud um, that the fashion system or the fashion world that is very fast has decided to tolerate 
a designer like me who moves very slow. A lot of people say, you know, Rick Owens is always Rick Owens and he's always the same and it's boring. There are people that say that and, you know, um, criticism is, is um, valuable. I mean, you know, usually criticism, you don't really listen to it unless there's a little piece of the truth in there. And it's true. I mean, for, you know, if, if you don't like Rick Owens, if you don't like that aesthetic, well, you're never really going to like him because it's not really going to change. So it's not like you're going to get like a big surprise. And, um, you know, big houses like, um, you know, big maisons, they have to please a lot more people than I do. I am, I'm, I'm knit, niche, you know, I have my little niche that, that I cater to. And, um, and, you know, I don't have a huge maison that needs to, that has a huge overhead, that has to satisfy um, more people than that. I can't imagine what those guys that work for those maisons have to go through though. It would kill me. <laughs> I mean, they must have to, they have, they have to listen to a lot of voices. There's a lot of people that, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, I think, at those places. Like with me, nobody bothers me and I just do my thing and I have that freedom. I don't have to answer to, I don't have to have people make suggestions mm -hmm. or um, insist on things, or I don't have to negotiate. That, ugh. Well, when I think about what those guys must go through every day, that just seems so hard. That, that would, I really, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. Yeah, I love money. Oh, it gives me beautiful things. Well, it gives me flowers every day. <laughs> it gives me um, um, travel. Um, it gives me the speed to get my things made. It gives me um, the flexibility to experiment with different new materials. It gives me all of the means to um, express my aesthetic. And it's so addictive that I wonder, and you, you know, I use, uh, like I said, you know, I've kind of, I learned to speed up. I mean, if, if I did everything um, I do in a year now, before, I, I mean, I never would have been able to do it. I, I had the time to be by myself and to go very slow. And I've, I've, I've speeded up like 10 times since then. And I love it. It's like an addiction. You just, you know, you're just gonna have to go until you blow up. Love, it's wonderful. It's, it's, um, we met because I worked for her in Los Angeles and she, um, being French, I could barely understand her for two years. I didn't even really, and you know, we didn't, we just crossed paths every once in a while in the building. I mean, we didn't really have to do anything together. And then, I don't know, we just started doing a couple of things together and it was very fast. It was very fast, really, <laughs> after that. And um, I honestly can't imagine, and I've never, re I'd never, I was 25 and I, uh, I hadn't, I'd never lived with anybody before. I'd never had anybody in a committed relationship. You know, I don't think I'd ever had a committed relationship before. And it was so easy and so inevitable. And I really can't imagine having, being able to be with anybody else. I mean, it just, it's, it's, um, it's great to like find somebody like, well, this is like the other half of me. This makes sense. And I mean, it's, it's inevitable. There's no other possibility on the planet for either of us, I don't think. You know, our aesthetic is so kind of connected that I think, oh, Hun would hate this or, you know, or, or, or but a lot, but I try not to because, you know, there's gotta be a little bit of an element of surprise. I mean, I have to think of, things that she didn't know that she wanted or that she didn't know she would like. Um, but at the beginning, it, it's true. I mean, I would leave things around the house that I'd made, and if she responded to something, I, I, I knew that it would work because she's very, um, she, she probably, to other women, she seems fairly extreme in the way she looks, but she's got incredible instinct, mystical little things, it's really great. And I'm, um, 
and she, she doesn't like to explain herself. She's she she's she's um, impatient with being too literal, and I'm very practical. I'm very linear, and she's very this, and I'm very that. Sometimes I'm like shaking her, like going, "What are you trying to tell me?" <laughs> and and and. Um, and um, and I'm sure she gets frustrated with me for being so uh, functional and pragmatic and practical and kind of very narrow. My dad asked me, you know, aren't you scared that you're going to run out of ideas? And I said, you know, I'm really not because I think it's all there. I don't think I have to look anywhere for anything. I think every collection I'm ever going to do is inside me. And every season I just have to untangle and edit and look for it and clean, you know, clean the dirt around it or something. But it's all, it's, it's all there, kind of. And um, um, I don't know if everybody feels that way, but, um, but that's, it, it's a, it's a say, uh, saying it's a secure feeling sounds a little bit arrogant, but I, I feel, I feel fairly safe that, um, that there's enough. <laughs> I feel like I feel like um, I feel like it's all there. Dad just turned eighty nine, and Mom yesterday just turned seven seventy eight or something. Mm -hmm. So um, they've been retired for a while. And Mom was a teacher. And Mom sewed when I was a kid. She mm -hmm. sewed for people. She never taught me how to sew, and she mm -hmm. never really. That wasn't what a boy did, so it wasn't like that was something that we really shared then, mm -hmm. but something happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and Dad, um, he wasn't so interested in a boy making women's dresses. <laughs> I'm too busy to go to Los Angeles, and it's too far, and I'm not, I don't really want to. And they have the time, <laughs> so, and I think it's really good for them at their age to be coming to Paris every fashion week. If I went there, it would be just the three of us in their house, but when they come here, they have grandchildren, they have, like, they have the crew, you, I, you know, they have all of these young people. It's like, it's like um, all of the young kids that work for me are the grandchildren that they never had, so, and then they're having babies, and so, you know, I think it's fantastic for them. And for them to see me with like that big family, I think um, that's a lot better than if I went there. I feel comfortable living anywhere, kind of. Um, yeah, I mean, even not knowing the language. I mean, Paris is pretty easy. And I mean, you know, this is where I'm doing my work. So if, if I had to, if I, um, I could pretty much make myself at home anywhere, really. I'm not very sentimentally attached to cities or countries or anything. It, it, because I kind of create my own little world anyway. So it does, kind of, you know, the world that I have in Paris is almost exactly the same as the world I had in Los Angeles. I mean, it's, uh, my studio is where I live. Um, I, you know, then I have a gym, then I have a couple of restaurants. And it's that little triangle, and it's exactly the same. I have a company, so I mean, I can't afford to make mistakes mm -hmm. by mispronunciations or like not knowing how to speak a language. So I have to have enough people around me who can interpret properly. And that kind of protects me in a way. Um, but to be honest, um, I don't feel the need to, not knowing French kind of offers me another little layer of privacy. Mm -hmm. And the hardest part of becoming, of manufacturing and showing in Europe, and the whole, the hard part, is is the exposure for me because I'm I'm pretty reclusive, and I had a lot of privacy, and a lot of quiet. I need a lot of space. I need a lot of personal space, and I had that in Los Angeles before I started working this way. So when I started working this way. I had to let a lot of people into my space, and I had to communicate with a lot of people every day. 
So I don't need more communication. <laughs> you know, here are yeah, Pew, well. who we, um, yes, we invited into our world, um, we, I, we had a big appreciation of, of what he did. And what he did was, the reason that I was so um, impressed with Gareth is that graphically and technically his universe is so complete. And besides that, he can do it all by himself. I completely identify with somebody who can, who can start with zero and turn it into something. He doesn't need, he doesn't need people. He doesn't need sewers. He doesn't need technical people. He can make it all by himself. I mean, I've seen him make, and that um, I'm all you know. I identify with that because I like. Um, because I, I make things. I mean, I can, I can do it from zero to, and I think that that's really important, because when you can understand the skeleton, then you can kind of do anything. And so I, that's what I appreciate the most in Gareth, and so that's why I wanted, we wanted to um, be involved and, and to do what we could to support that. I like a lot of designers. I mean, I, mean, I like, you know, I'm mad that nobody saved Christian Lacroix. Mm -hmm. I think he's a genius. I don't. I, that's like crazy. That like he that that crazy. Um, and God, who else? I mean, I like all of the people my age. I wear me. I only wear this. I mean, I I have a uniform. Um, I'm busy doing other things. I kind of don't care what. I do care what I look like. But I mean, I find one thing that I like, and I just stay with it. And then besides that, it, it, I think the gym is more important, kind of. I mean, I go to, the, so I go to the gym every day, and that's kind of my couture. I don't like designers that make proclamations and that, that make rules. I hate that. I, like, it's so obnoxious. That's, I'm never going to do that, I hope. I mean, that's not the kind of designer I want to be. I have a list. OK, first, learn how to make clothes. Learn how to make clothes, learn how to make clothes. Don't do sketches and collages, because that's bullshit. I mean, anybody can do that. You have to learn how to make clothes. Um, and then the other thing is, you have to shut up and work and work and work all the time and produce and produce and produce. And the more you produce, um, your, your character or your talent will emerge. For better or for worse, your identity, your personality, your vision, whatever, as long as you ha work and work and work and, and make enough things to choose from, you'll be able to have an edit. You'll be able to edit something that becomes who you are. It's so simple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to like go to parties. You don't have to meet the right people. You don't. You just have to like work and work and work and get your stuff out there. You have to go out there and you have to show it to people. You can't expect people to come knocking on your door. You have to show it. But um, y you know, uh, kissing somebody's ass isn't going to really help that much. I mean, unless it really, unless it's good. So. Um, you know, you, your main thing is just to get your work out there and, and get a lot of it done so that you, have, you can pick the very best. And that's not as easy as it sounds. I mean, working, it's, it's e I think it's easier for somebody like me because I was an only child and I'm very used to playing by myself. And I know that there are people that need, that it's hard being by themselves, and it's like, you know, when you think of a writer that has to be in front of a white piece of paper, it's hard to start, and it's hard to do that every day, and it's hard to keep going without stimulation and without, um, without instant validation or without a lot of validation. And it's very hard to keep that focus and to keep that vision. So I mean, it's it, I, I make it sound easy, but it, I mean, it's not. It's really it's hard to do that. Um, it's, it's easier for somebody like me because I uh, was used to that. I was used to playing by myself, so um, it's comfortable for me. I'm not a very good collaborator, and there are other designers like I, I believe. I believe Margiela is was probably. I know that. 
I know that there were a lot of people there, and he was able to create magic with an army, kind of. And I don't, I wouldn't be able to do that. I know that there are some people that are good at um, at pulling out something from people, or or with their collaboration, making a decision that will make something good. I get distracted and confused, and I am not good at collaboration, so I wouldn't be able to do that kind of thing. Some people are great at it, but I just don't know how. Mm -hmm.